Welcome back to The Morning Show here on Arise News with me, Katira King. My next guest is the innovative Nigerian designer behind the multi-award winning label, Itwen Basi. Itwen is a theater arts graduate from the University of Affair in Nigeria, who trained under theater art greats like Wale Shoyinka. She then transitioned to a major in tailoring and clothing technology at the London College of Fashion in the UK. In 2009, she launched her first full home-based collection to critical acclaim and pioneered a new era of Ankara inter interpretation in Nigeria and Africa. It's been four years since the label has been featured in Vogue Italia, Bro British Vogue, Elle South Africa, Ebony and Pride magazine, amongst other international press. And the label shown on runways in Dakar, Milan, Paris, London, Vienna, and Johannesburg, where the label was awarded the Mercedes-Benz Designer of the Year Award in 2012. In addition, Vogue Italia invited Ito and Bassi to take part in the Pitti Milan trade show under their super talents. Being part of the theatre is a major devotion for Itwen Bassi, as she's made innovative costumes for stage plays like For Coloured Girls and Kakadu the Musical, amongst others. Please join me in giving a massive hurrah to the delightful Itwen Bassi. Good morning. Good morning, Sarah. Thank you so much for that wonderful intro. I, well, I couldn't have done it without you. If you hadn't done all those accomplishments, I would have nothing to say. Well, you said so well. <laughs> Thank you. You are amazing. So I know we were talking about the fact that you studied theatre arts under greats like Wale Shoyinka, but yes. I feel as though I'm sitting in the presence of a fashion great. Everybody knows who you are. I mean, we talk about you in every country under the sun. How does yeah. it feel being it's my bassy? I think it's all good. I'm doing now my head is spinning. <laughs> Thank you so much. You're really kind. Oh, you're most you're welcome. Kind. So I assume you're wearing your own collection. Yes, I am, actually. Yes, and am. you've revamped Ankara. So Ankara is traditional Nigerian prints. It may have come from Holland, yes, but it's yes, ours. Which everybody we're, says. We are claiming <laughs> it. It's ours. Yes, we are. <laughs> and yes, we are. I'm wearing an Ankara dress. You're wearing an Ankara dress. But Ankara, typically, this was about the most fashionable as it could ever get. You know, you might give them your own design of a regular yeah. dress, yeah. and they just make it an Ankara print. Yeah. You have totally revamped that. Talk to me about how the process went for you. Well, it wasn't something that I started out um, doing consciously. Um, I just returned from England where I had lived for several years. And, um, and returning and trying to get back to designing and not having fabrics that <laughs> I would have preferred to work with. The only fabric that I found that I had in, in vast quantities um, was Ankara. So I decided, you know, how do I make this, how do I make this um, mine? How do I yeah. own it? How do I put a stamp on it? And, mm -hmm. and that, that was how we started. It was quite accidental. Wow. It was a good accident. But isn't that how most amazing things <laughs> yeah, are created? Well, That's what so. Albert Einstein said. Oh, yeah. So another great for you. Well, there you go. <laughs> so you recently created the Ekemini Collection. Um, the Ekemini Collection was bef well that, that was before the most recent one is in Koya collection which I named after my my mum. All right, so we yes, can see the Ekemini collection on screen now. Yes, we are. I mean, what are the influences behind the these, the this Ekemini collection? collection? I really loved because um, it was a collaboration with a an amazing Nigerian um, artist, Victor Ahekemina. Oh, I so love used, him. Yeah, so we used his artwork. It was a fantastic collaboration, and I absolutely loved that. Oh, it looks gorgeous. Where can we find it for sale? Amazing. Can I have one? <laughs> <laughs> that Absolutely. is beyond. So it was amazing. You were mentioning your new collection yes. that you named after your mum in Koye. Yes. Tell me about that. Um, the new collection was, you know, because we're coming into 10 years of being back in Nigeria. And um, we decided to look back at all the things we had done in the past. Oh, wow. And so we took our favorite elements from all previous collections and put them together to come up with um, what we call the Nkoyo collection. I love and yes, that. Yes, so yes, it's like yes. a celebratory collection. It is, it absolutely. Amazing. Couldn't have put it better myself. Oh, yes. Okay. Yes. Now, there's a dress that we like to wear in Nigeria. It's called the Oleku dress. Ah. And it looks typically like an Iroambaba. So for those of our viewers that don't know what that is, it's effectively a top and wraparound skirt that Yoruba people traditionally wear. Yes. You just took that dress and made it your own. Wow. How did you revamp the Oleku trend single-handedly? 2010, Nigeria became 50, and we wanted to do something that was, you know, that represented where we're coming from. And, um, and so we, you know, like we looked back into our archives, you know, what could we 
pull out that was typically Nigerian. Yeah. It was, we didn't want anything that was borrowed from anywhere else. So right. Bubani Row is completely Nigerian. Yes, exactly. No other country <laughs> can claim ownership of the Bubani Row. And we thought, you know, how do we bring it to present day mm -hmm. um, with a nod to where it's coming from? So, yeah, that's how, how the Bubani Row came. You know, we call it La Fian Shalewa. Ah. Yes. Okay, we have some Chalewa. of those pictures of Lakwe and Shalewa now. Absolutely. Where did you get the name from? What does Lakwe mean? Lakwe, what does mean? Lakwe is um, Lakwe, Lakwe is a name my my sister's mother in law is called Lakwe, and she's a very strong woman. And we kind of liked, you know, we liked that, you know, to call the top Lakwe. Right. And Shalewa, there's just something very flirty and girly about it's, Shalewa, so and look we at decided. Those designs, yeah. they're beautiful. So, how do you put that on? Is that just a dress, or do you have to tie oh, it? No, somewhere? you have to tie it. So, uh, it's like a traditional, traditional yes, oh. completely traditional. But we, we, we revamped it because, you know, like when we did that collection, people wearing it clubbing, you know, like the ushers <laughs> in, in churches, it was just everywhere. Wow. You know, that, that we, we really, I really enjoyed doing that. Oh, man. I really enjoyed doing And the other thing about the um, La Pancheleva was because uh, we'd come back, we weren't, I wasn't really sure how trends worked in Nigeria. So right. we decided to use that as an experiment to see how far reaching we could start a trend or we could, you, you know, we could track a trend. It wasn't so much to start, it was more to track a trend. Wow. So we put that out and, um, and yeah, and, and as they say, the rest is history. The it's rest, really, as yeah. they say, yeah. is history. Yeah. Now, it's we great. saw some of that, uh, some of what I'm about to say in the pictures that were just on screen now. We can see it a little bit in your dress as well. You, I mean, you're the convener of all the trends in Lagos, effectively, but you started another trend which involves the use of patchwork. Yes. Where did that idea come from? Again, it was putting a stamp on something that was everywhere. Mm -hmm. So you find Ankara, and you know, like we needed to make it a little bit more special than what you'd find on the street. So, um, and you know, like Ankara, when we first started, was just made in one fabrication, which was cotton. So it didn't have enough, you know, like your fabric is a bit softer. We mm -hmm. didn't have, it didn't have any kind of movement right. to it. So we decided to do what we call treatments. Okay. So we did the patchwork, we did um, the tassels, we did layering, just different kinds of things to just change the texture and, um, and just give it a bit of, you know, make it a bit more fun. Wow. And make it a bit more special. You know what I've just dubbed you in my head right now? <laughs> the fabric whisperer. <laughs> You're able to manipulate fabrics to do whatever <laughs> you want it to do. That's amazing. Well, yes. Um, y y thank yes. you. Wow, I <laughs> love it. You. So immodest. Thank you. <laughs> now, thank you. another one of your wonderful accolades is the fact that you were recently featured in Elle South Africa and you had your, the models walking on their runway in your designs. Mm -hmm. Tell me about that experience. Uh, that was the Cape Town Fashion Week. Um, no, sorry, Mercedes Benz Fashion Week in Cape Town. Yes. And uh, yeah, that was special. That was where we launched um, the Nkoyo collection. Ah. And so we had, you know, we had press. We had amazing press. We had Earl South Africa. We had Marie Claire. We had Cosmopolitan. And I think the wonderful thing about it was that they really took to the collection. Yeah. People really liked it. So that made, kind of made my day. I love how what people are saying, the fact that you've turned everything into different textures and the yes. way that you use the pockets. Yeah. And you really just take something ordinary and transform it into the extraordinary. Thank you. You're like a magician. <laughs> <laughs> I've never quite considered myself a magician. You but are. Yes. So we, we, I, I, I like the process of creating. I like right. the process of, you know, just like you said, taking something quite mundane or seemingly mundane mm -hmm. and just playing with it. You know, wow. so yeah, I really enjoy that. Amazing. Now, we were talking about the different uh, international press that were at the Mercedes-Benz Fashion mm -hmm. Week in Cape Town. Mm -hmm. And I also mentioned in your intro the fact that you've been featured in every single amazing <laughs> high-end fashion magazine in the world, wow. from Vogue Italia to British Vogue. What Thank does God it feel that. like being internationally lauded? It, it's, um, it's very humbling. It's extremely humbling because, you, you know, you, you're just minding your business doing what you know to do. And um, so when you get the spotlight or you get that kind of attention, um, it, it really makes me slightly uncomfortable, but, you know, very grateful. <laughs> yeah. Very, very grateful. Oh, wow. Yes. And being someone with such a powerful, far-reaching voice on the continent and further afield, what sort of impact would you say that you're looking to make in your Africa? I think for us, it's, it's, um, 
it wasn't a conscious thing, but over time we've come to look at, you know, what, what is it that people think of Africa? What is it that, but for us it's changing the, the narrative mm. or in introducing a different narrative, you know, like Africa can be totally African, but also cool. It can be totally African, but also positive. Exactly. And I think that's what it is, you know, like it doesn't have to be non-African to be amazing. So, you know, that that's what it is for us. Yeah. Mm. What would you say, that the biggest misconception about fashion in Africa that you've come across has been and why? Biggest misconception about fashion in Africa is that it has to be Ankara. <laughs> <laughs> which is uh, interesting which considering is, you only uh, use yeah. Ankara. <laughs> well, we don't know only use Ankara, which is ah, very interesting. Yes. Okay. We don't know, if we, but that, that was what put us on the map, if you like. Yes. So, you know, like that's what people associate with us. So, you know, it's not a bad thing, but people kind of think that if it's African, it has to be African print. Yes. No, I don't think so. And that's a really interesting notion to have as well, because we're seeing a lot of fashion designers play with other interesting fabrics Absolutely. from calico yeah. to raffia yeah. to organza, yeah. and it doesn't make them any less fashion. It doesn't. Uh, fashion, it, any less African. Less African. <laughs> <laughs> I've got it. fashion on the brain. <laughs> Amazing stuff. It's when for those of our viewers that want to purchase dresses, want to keep up with you and your lifestyle and your collection, how can they do so via social media? Instagram, Etwan Bassi. That's it. Etwan Bassi, uh, Etwan Bassi World. So we've got two Instagram Fantastic. handles. Thank you. And what's your website's address? www.etwanbassi.com Fantastic. Well, we look forward to keeping up with you and I'm so, so happy that I got the chance to speak with you. I'm so happy to be here. <laughs> <laughs> Thank, Thank you so you much for having one. me. <laughs> Thank you. That is all from the delightful little one, Bassi, as it's time now for a short break on The Morning Show. But when we return, it's time for our take. Don't go away.